A move I like to play against the Queen's Gambit is Knight to c6. Here I give importance to development. There's a lot of lines that I'm going to go through. Uh, the first one I'm going to take into account is Knight to c3 is the third move for the white player. Um, now here I play Knight to f6 and the game is likely to become a four knight. Now here the move I suggest to go on with is Bishop to g4. And there's several options here. There's pawn, there's this pawn, uh, h3 or e3, or even knight to e5. The most common one, but we're going to go through all of them, the most common one is pawn to e3. Now, after this move, is uh, the, the, the reply I prefer is pawn to e5. So this is pretty aggressive. And now, well, the knight is now pinned, can't move then the knight uh, can't take the pawn, and the pawn could take uh, in e5, the, other, the, the c pawn could take in uh, d5, or even the knight, there's a lot of options, or h3, h3 is the main move. So after h3, now here black uh, takes knight, this is the best move for the black player, uh, black gives up the knight, uh, the bishop for the knight, and now white could either recapture with the pawn or with the queen. If white takes with the queen, now the move to go on, and black here is already uh, in a good advantage. Pawn takes pawn. If pawn takes back, knight can jump to d4, threatening the queen and the c2 square. Uh, either d1 is an option, or e3 with check. So if queen goes to e3 with check, black plays queen to e7, pinning the queen, meaning that the, black, uh, that the white queen can't take the knight. Now, swapping will be comfortable for the black player after bishop takes e7. Black is still threatening the, D, the, the c2 square, which means that white will have to lose his right to castle or just play bishop to d3. Now, bishop to d3 loses to pawn takes c4, forcing the bishop to go back to b1 and then allowing black to castle and play comfortable endgame with an extra pawn. Um, extra two pawns actually and if king to d1 uh, black can just can castle long side this is the main idea here eventually open up the file and play a comfortable endgame with the same uh, advantage in material then if uh, if white decides to play bishop d3 for example to protect the c2 square and finally uh, get going with development here black can just take the pawn so pretty much the same thing, um, forcing the bishop back to b1, only square, and now just swapping pieces is ideal. And now after castling, black goes on with his material advantage of two pawns, so playing an easy endgame. Another option here, uh, another option was queen to d1, but that's just passive and lets black pick up the pawn and now uh, still keep an advantage of a pawn then another option would be either pawn takes or knight takes now pawn takes could be a cheeky try by the white player but that's a blunder pawn can take the knight now and now uh, white is down a piece so he has to take the knight which allows black to have this move pawn takes b2 and now uh, black is threatening to take with promotion. White is forced to take back, which gives bishop check. The bishop sacrifice in c3 wouldn't make any sense. The d file is controlled by the queen, and the king is forced to e2, which leaves the queen able to give a checkmate. Another option is knight takes d5, and now we take we take back. Here white can choose to take either with the pawn or with the queen. Um, if white takes with the queen, that's not good for the white player. Now black develop, develops with tempo, this is check, and the king needs to go to d1. Uh, bishop d2 is not a good option. Now black can just swap, king has to take, and now black takes the pawn with check. Now here, uh, black is uh, breaking uh, the pawns uh, the pawn chain of the white player forcing an isolated pawn as long as the 
uh, white king doesn't want to go to e3, but that would be really bad to expose himself so much. Um, if uh, and then pawn takes now black plays a good end game. He plays queen e7 now. Uh, swapping the queens will not be ideal. Rook is coming to d8, so the queen is forced to move away from the pinning square. Best move for the queen now is queen to f3. Uh, rook can come to d8, and black can play a comfortable end game here as well. Back to knight takes pawn, knight takes, and now uh, white can take with the pawn, maybe trying to reunite uh, the chain, the big pawn chain. Now here the plan continues in a similar way. Bishop check, uh, white could either lose his right to castle uh, by going to d1, bishop to d2, the plan continues in a similar way. Let's say king d1, now black can take the pawn in, uh, in e3, and well, this pawn is not able to capture the knight because it's pinned. Um, now queen can choose to take with check, knight e7, and now the pawn in d5 is being attacked by two pieces, and no move can really help to save the pawn. Maybe bishop c4 uh, gives some more um, some more time to the white player, but he's already lost the right to castle in a game where the queens are still on the board. And after castling, now black is playing a good end game. If uh, instead of king d1, white plays bishop to d2, now here black takes bishop, king takes back, and white avoids swapping pieces and just castles, preparing a strong attack uh, involving the rooks on open files, which is why um, white is definitely not recommended to take the knight because of some really bad discover checks. Now white um, should probably take the the pawn. Um, I don't really want to go on, I don't think it's necessary, although um, I don't think there's any point studying this situation because I think here Rook E8 should probably just win. At the beginning of the game, move 6, we uh, took the knight after, after the bishop was being threatened by the h3 pawn and we consider queen takes... Uh, Bishop, which loses control over the square d4 and gave white all sorts of different trouble. Um, now, black, uh, white can choose to capture this pawn, uh, this bishop with the pawn in g2, uh, still uh, allowing the queen to control d4, but now black takes the pawn and the queen obviously cannot recapture because of the knight, so black, uh, white, I mean, black is up a pawn, um, white recapturing gives a double isolated pawn. And a comfortable situation for the black player. Um, so now the black player here can just play. The, move, the suggested move is pawn takes c4. And now black can just play according to his style. Um, the white king can't really castle anywhere safe. Uh, so it's uh, important for the black player to not swap queens. Now white can recapture the pawn. Although black has double attack on the pawn in d4, which means that black can keep his material advantage and a uh, much better pawn structure. If uh, the main move now is pawn to d5, if black, if white plays bishop to e3, um, black can go for the usual move that um, players against the, uh, the those that play against the queen's gambit. Uh, especially if those that those that um, that play the queen's gambit accepted might know, and uh, this is the pawn that is trying to go to b4, and that can't get taken. But then bishop b4 check, knight comes back, and then the knight is uh, getting rid of the opponent's bishop pair, and and now white can probably uh, well white should play like bishop d2 or queen, uh, queen to c2 
Although now black can take the bishop and getting the queen and um, getting the queen into the game and then castle is king and play a uh, an end game that the uh, that is way more comfortable than the white player. Um, going back, pawn takes pawn and pawn takes pawn and pawn takes c4. Now here, the main move is pawn to d5. So if pawn to d5, now um, this game transposes into uh, the specific tactic, uh, positional tactic that there is in uh, in this in the Chigorin, the usual queen pinning queen with the knight in d4. Attacking c2, and so now if queen takes queen, we're happy because we uh, take back and then we play on with a great advantage in, in terms of pawn structure and, and number. So this situation is um, clearly not happy for the white player to continue.